is the morning. Um, today's topic we're going to be discussing uh, education and leadership, leadership, leaders for life syndrome. Uh, apologies, first and foremost, uh, on behalf of Professor Isaiah Wakindiki uh, of KCA University was supposed to be our guest speaker this morning. He got caught up in uh, very urgent and important uh, council work at the university, but our own Dr. Martin Odoro channel will be leading uh, the conversation uh, on his behalf. So I really have two tasks, uh, very simple tasks. The first one is to let you know a little bit about the leadership group. And the second one is then to introduce the speaker of today. For those of you who haven't interacted with the leadership group for, for, for much uh, uh, lately, just to refresh you, the leadership group was incorporated in 2015 and started its operations in 2016. So we're talking about uh, having been around and worked and impacted uh, leaders for the last six years. Uh, the leadership group uh, works in a number of, uh, of key areas. Uh, the first being coaching and mentorship. And this is really where we help leaders to be able to uh, uh, achieve uh, their full potential, to be able to, to navigate uh, leadership uh, terrain and, and be able to become more effective in their workspaces. We also do leadership and communication uh, as part of our key offering, uh, where we really engage around leadership development, both in the short term and the long term, and also just uh, reiterating that uh, as a key part of your job as a leader, communication really is central to the way you, you engage and, uh, and, and motivate your teams. We also uh, engage uh, at the governance and board practice levels. Uh, and this is really where we work with boards around capacity building, but also we engage in activities such as board evaluation and governance audits. Um, the fourth area where we, we engage again is on strategy as well as uh, a business advisory. And among the things we do really is first and foremost, helping organizations to, to navigate the process of, of creating and implementing strategies but also we do projects around that same area. Uh, and organizations that are seeking opinion from a professional standpoint around how they can transform businesses for better performance, again, we're able to interact and engage on that. Uh, then finally, culture and change management for organizations that are seeking to transform their teams and be able to get better results and, 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 and much productivity from them through behavior as well as as change in, in the way they interact with stakeholders. Uh, that's a key part of the work we do. Um, over the past six years, we have uh, engaged with over 70 organizations, uh, impacting individuals in the C-suit and boardrooms that are probably amount to over 1,000. But we've also specifically helped C-suit leaders through executive coaching and, and uh, in this uh, since we, we have actually worked with over 250 uh, senior executives uh, helping them navigate their leadership uh, their situations. Uh, we want to welcome you as you join us today for this webinar to, to join our alumni community. Uh, Kelly is going to be posting some of our online properties and we request you to go in there, uh, register and uh, be able to engage with us. She's also going to send you our our calendar for 2022, we are running uh, about two programs every month uh, under the banner of Leadership Excellence Programs for 2022. Uh, we have a calendar that runs from last month until end of the year. And uh, we want you to take time and just go in there and see if there's something that you can uh, get from there that can help you. Uh, and in, the next, in any case you find something interesting, just get in touch with us so we can actually uh, find a way to, to work together and, and, and just be able to, to assist your, your process. Um, so that's probably about the leadership group. Uh, there is a, a, we have a website, of course, which uh, you can go in and find a bit more information, uh, but also some of the documents that Kelly is going to send you will be, give you a bit more background. So let me just go back to the man of the day, uh, our case note speaker, the gentleman that probably doesn't need a lot of introduction, uh, Dr. Martin Oduro-Eteno, 
Dr. Matthew Rodol Cheno is the founder and the CEO of the leadership group. He's also the director of the leadership group. He founded this as part of his calling to be able to give back to upcoming leaders from his many years of experience leading boardrooms and C-suits. Dr. Martin Oduro Chen, as you probably all know, is the chairman of EABL, the East African Breweries, uh, the giant of the region in uh, brewing and uh, refreshing. It tells us that uh, their vision is, um, uh, uh, Martin will probably remind <laughs> me, but it's about uh, celebrating life uh, every day and everywhere, and in probably in every way. And uh, he's also a member of various boards, including BAT, the Standard Bank Group of South Africa, and the Standard Bank of South Africa, which is uh, the father of, of banks like Stanbank. And probably where most of you know Martin a lot more is, is in his time as CEO of KCB, where he, he led the transformation of one of the best uh, banks in the region for over a period of 10 years. And I just wanna take this moment to ask all of you to go to your gadgets and, and uh, clap for Martin so that I can welcome him to take over from here so that uh, we can hear what he has to tell us around today's topic of leadership and education, Leaders for Life Syndrome. Can I see claps for Martin? All right, so Martin, without much ado, I want to welcome you to take it over from here. Uh, thank you very much, Kefa, and uh, good morning, um, everyone who has joined us on this call today. Very delighted to see uh, all of you here. Um, welcome to the leadership group uh, and to our webinar series. Uh, as Kefa has mentioned, we do run this every month around this time of the month. And so uh, feel free to join us on our future webinars as well. Uh, the, we keep this to, to a one hour uh, maximum so that uh, you can then continue the rest of your uh, activities for, for, for the day. Uh, as Kefa says, we at the leadership group are all about leadership. Uh, our tagline is growing leaders. And, 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 and so uh, that is uh, what we're going to be talking about uh, today. Uh, as, um, let me just share my screen so that we can uh, and, and Kelly, do tell me if, uh, if uh, it can be seen or not. Uh, let me do that. Um, share. Yeah. Yes, it's, we can see We're us. Okay. Right. Yes. Again, as, as Kef has said, you know, when we set up for this webinar, we're going to talk about education and leadership. And we're going to be led in this discussion by Professor Isaiah Wakindiki, who is a vice chancellor of, uh, of KCA University. He's been recently installed as vice chancellor in the last uh, few months. So this was going to be an opportunity for us to get to know him and to get to know more about uh, KCA University as well. Uh, but as Kef has said, you know, uh, we, we can't have him today. And so, um, I'm not really an expert in the field of education and therefore I will not be talking about education to the extent that professor would have talked about it. But certainly the concept of leaders for life is one that uh, uh, is, is, is of interest to me as a student of leadership. Uh, and so what I want to explore with you this morning and I'll be uh, uh, you know, asking you to engage in this conversation is really around the concept of leaders for life. Uh, issues around when should leaders pass the button uh, to the next generation of leaders? Uh, how best should they prepare the ground for that? Um, I was also intrigued over the weekend to read uh, an article in the Sunday Nation, which was written by Sunny Bindra, who a number of you may know. And Sunny was talking about legacy, leadership legacy. And so those are the two subjects that, are, that I'd like to explore uh, this morning. Uh, and to engage you in exploring that. And again, when we talk about legacy, I'd like us just to look at uh, it from the point of view of uh, what actually is legacy and how do you, 
how do you prepare and execute uh, and secure your leadership legacy now that all of us on this call are leaders uh, in one sense uh, or another. So this is what uh, the subject for this morning uh, is going to be, and I invite you to, uh, to engage with it. Uh, we'll have one or two breakout, uh, breakout sessions where you can go, we can go into smaller groups and just discuss these two topics uh, and then feedback. But one thing that we assure you is that uh, we'll be out of this place by 12 noon at the top of the hour so that we don't hold you here for too long. Uh, Kefa has spoken about who we are, and uh, I think Kelly has already shared with you our program of uh, leadership, uh, leadership events for the rest of this year. Um, uh, it's not too late, but actually tomorrow, let me mention that tomorrow we are running a program on a one day program on uh, board readiness. So if there's any of you in the room who want to come into our program tomorrow at, uh, at Kempinski on board readiness, this is one where we talk about how people prepare themselves to assume board positions and how they can become effective as board members. So if you're interested in this, just side chat Kelly and she can then uh, um, you know, um, get you onto this program that we are running tomorrow. And then you know, uh, she's also posted in the chat box the rest of this calendar for, uh, for this half year, as well as for uh, the second half of the year, which, which obviously goes up to December. So to kick us off then, uh, I think we're all, you know, we, 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 we all do believe that education is important for leadership. Uh, that's why we invest a lot of our time and money and effort in sending our children to schools uh, to, to let them get the best and to prepare for, for future and, and, and for the future in a sense of, of leadership, whether we are leading our own businesses, we are leading uh, in the public, corporate, nonprofit worlds. We all believe that education gives us a great foundation for this and that uh, it, 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 it therefore gives us an opportunity to preside over uh, more positive outcomes uh, in the institutions in which we are. And uh, you know, research has been done, and uh, I don't have it here, but certainly we can we can look to uh, outcomes that have been really positive. Uh, you know, whenever we've engaged people in leadership positions who have been you know well well tutored, well educated, well experienced, etc. And this is the side that the professor was going to talk about and really talk to us about how therefore education is preparing uh, people for for future leadership positions. Uh, and, 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 and so we can come back to that theme uh, later on. Uh, I'm sure we can also think of people who are not as, as well educated, but have also delivered positive, uh, positive outcomes. Um, and, and we can have a conversation uh, about that. But just to move on to the, to the subject of, uh, to the subject of, uh, of leadership uh, for, for, for life, the theme of today's conversation, uh, leaders for life syndrome, We've had this conversation in our country here in Kenya. Uh, we've had it in the judiciary. We've had it uh, in, in academia. Uh, this slide that I'm showing here is one where the uh, university professors had gone to, to court to say that uh, you know, they need to have higher retirement age than uh, the rest of the public service, et cetera. Uh, and the court declined to, 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 to allow that. And if you look at the left side of this, of this you know, the, uh, some of the studies which have been done point to the fact that, uh, um, you know, 80% of professionals want to stay busy and productive. So after retirement age, which is currently 60 or, or, or 55 or 50, depending on where you work, you know, people still feel that they are very, very productive and they can actually deliver a lot uh, in, the, in, the, in their spheres. 64% uh, say they love their work too much to give it up. Uh, and certainly with the fact that people are living longer uh, these days uh, in general, uh, there's, there's a question to be asked about if you retire at 50, what do you do for the rest of your life? And so th this comes back to this question of leaders for life uh, uh, syndrome. Uh, but those of you who are uh, you know, uh, in the in the medical field or, or, or psychology or people who study the brain may also share with us what they think happens to the brain as we go into our 
twilight years of uh, you know 70s 80s 90s and what that does to our leadership so again just to sort of say that this this is a, a subject which is very much uh, alive um, you will recall that in our judiciary again uh, judges believe that they get better with age just like uh, like wine uh, and so again there were court cases in the last couple of years uh, and the retirement age for judges was actually brought down from i believe it used to be 74 down to 70. again begging the same question about leaders for life uh, syndrome if we look at uh, the corporate scene um, one of the things that we can we can also uh, talk about or discuss is really around um you know leaders in long-term roles we know of uh, corporate leaders who have actually stayed for a long time um uh, my own view and this is this is completely personal is usually that is is that if you if you stay in a place for more than as a leader in for more than kind of 10 years uh, something begins to happen either you know something begins to go awfully wrong uh you become so complacent that uh, you are no longer reinventing yourself. Um, you, know, you know, many of you will know about the S curve, you know, where, where you are doing well and growing up to a level and then it, fly, it goes into a plateau and you need to create another S curve to take you to the next level. And, and um, you know, I find that uh, 10 years seems like a sweet spot for leadership. Uh, beyond that, uh, other things began, be, begin to happen. And in this slide, uh, I'm talking about uh, you know character, competence, and, and 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 consistency as traits which are the backbone of any leader's longevity. Um, and 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 this this is a quote from John Maxwell, who again has written uh, quite a bit on this subject. When we talk about character, we're really talking about values, what 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 we stand for, what are our beliefs, and how do those influence our actions. When we talk about competence, uh, it's really uh, our knowledge, our experience, uh, and how we therefore produce positive outcomes for our organizations. And when we talk consistency, it's really around uh, you know how we can we how we can engage um, in the same pattern on a continuous, ongoing basis, so that we are not on a high today and on a low tomorrow, and we're not delivering consistent results. Uh, we're kind of in a yo-yo kind, in a yo-yo state, and so it's about you know behaviors, temperament, integrity, but it's also about uh, how consistent we are in in producing the results that we uh, that we do produce. I also thought that I should just show up, you know, if you go into politics, and uh, this is important because uh, in, in 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 this is a, an election year for us in Kenya. Uh, we can see across Africa leaders who have been on the throne for uh, about 40 years, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, some of them have since died, but uh, you can just see that. I mean, closer to us in Uganda, I think we're now looking at 34 years uh, of Museveni. Um, in our country, uh, you know, we had a 24-year reign at some point, but we are now onto our five-year five cycle. Uh, possibly 10 year, uh, two, five year terms maximum. And again, the question to ask for us as leaders is, is you know, I mean, is, is this is a good or a bad thing? Does it produce the positive results that, uh, that, that countries are looking for? Or is there something to say about term limits uh, in leadership? And should it only apply to, uh, to the political uh, sector? Or should it also apply to corporates and to and to non uh, non non profit sectors uh, as well? And what's the extent to which this contributes to some of the instability that we see, or some of the stagnant uh, you know processes rather than growth or declining economies? If you are on the scene for too long, how do you again use that S curve to reinvent yourself, uh, whether you are in this in the public sector or in the private sector? And I would say that uh, you know timing is everything uh, in 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 this. Um, you don't want to pass the baton too early. So after one or two years, maybe you haven't actually done what it is that you wanted to do as a leader. Uh, you don't want to do it too late when you're in when you go in for twenty years, thirty years. Uh, you know you probably might be seen to be over overstaying your welcome, overstepping your welcome, and therefore finding a correct time to pass the baton is an important. Uh, is, is an important stage. 
And I really thought that rather than me talking throughout here, uh, it would probably be important for us just to, uh, for just about, uh, let's say 10 minutes, let's just go into uh, a few breakout groups for 10 minutes and just discuss this question about uh, what is the right time to pass on uh, the baton and how do you best prepare yourself and your organization to pass on the baton to the next uh, group of leaders uh, in your organization. So Kelly, if we could, uh, I see we're about 70 people on this call. Uh, let's just do a quick, uh, uh, maybe seven groups of, uh, of 10 people each. And if you can spend 10 minutes on that topic and Kelly will put up that topic again in your rooms. So let's have a quick conversation and we'll then pick one or two of the groups to, 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 to give us some reflections on what they think. So Kelly, can we do that? All right. All right, thank you. All right, looks like we are all back. So welcome back. Um, let me ask uh, who wants to, to go first. We, we don't have uh, time to go around all the teams, but let's just see if we can hear from two or three of the, of the groups, what you came up with. I will take the lead, my group. Yes, is that funny? Yes. Yes, go ahead, Fanis. Thank you. Okay. I, I will start. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I will start with the how. How do you pass on the, the how do you prepare to pass on the button? So um, my group felt um, you prepare uh, through availing opportunities to the people you are leading, availing opportunities to the people you are leading so that they can exercise their leadership skills. Mm -hmm. um, we also felt uh, through delegation, where you delegate some of your tasks to, uh, to, to members of your group who you feel are competent. And then um, we also talked about uh, capacity building as one of the, as one of the um, uh, tools you can use uh, in preparing to hand over the button. And um, we also felt uh, a hands-off session, for example, where a leader uh, may decide uh, this week I'm in, yes, but I'll be off. I'll allow somebody else to stay in and just lead as, 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 I, as I watch or as I oversee. Um, I think um, also giving your members time to make decisions making your, giving your members time to make decisions. So that is the how you prepare to hand over the button. Um, when it comes to when do you pass on the button, we felt you, you pass on the button at a time when your term is over. If let's say you have been employed as a, a CEO and uh, your term was five years and the five years are over, it's time to hand over the button. That is if you're employed, uh, if you're operating your own business, we felt um, you pass over the button at a time when you feel you're satisfied, you have identified a competent leader. Yeah, I think that is all, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Fanny's. Thank you for that. Let's give uh, Fanny's a, a round of applause. Uh, thank you very much. Um, 
Let's see who wants to go next. Um, I'll go next. Uh, yes, that is Derek. Yes. Right. Um, thanks. Thanks, thanks, Chair. Um, I think for us, we in terms of in terms of how we looked at uh, three three issues. Uh, mentorship was one of them. Uh, looking at both sides, both the mentor and the mentee, you know, both have to be willing to, you know, to work together. Um, and then we also talked about giving, you know, people the opportunities to lead. Um, that is in decision making, um, you know, might start with small decisions in an organization. And also the aspect of seeing potential, you know, some leaders, some people are leaders, but probably they might not know. So you see the potential in them and begin to draw it out by, you know, giving them opportunities to lead might be small. Um, and also talked about structures, making sure that the structures and the systems are ready uh, for, the, for the people uh, that you're leaving to be able to continue. And the person that you're leaving, uh, that you're, that you're leaving uh, will have an easier time. Um, yeah, in terms of when we didn't like talk about it much, but I, we felt like, you know, it shouldn't be too close to when you're supposed to leave. It should be, if you're doing maybe 10 years, you should be, you should begin handing the baton maybe in your seven or your, uh, your, your, your last term, so to speak. So you should be like, wait for the last year and then you're beginning to hand over everything. So that's what we discussed. Yeah, I think that's, that's all we had time for. Thanks, Chair. Yeah. Thank you very much, Derek. Let's give him a round of uh, applause as well. Um, who wants to go next? I can go next. Oh. Yes, uh, Kimani. So I was leading room seven and we had very in amazing insights from our members, Makidedi, Maxi, and Michael. And we looked at the case of monarchs such as the UAE, where they have this, where the leader also has a crown prince who's going to take up the leadership role and therefore lead the camp has various responsibilities to take before the baton is passed on to them and we summarized them into three those positionality purpose and pivoting to answer the two questions and in positionality is where there has to be a willing buyer and a willing seller meaning there has to be someone who's willing to take up the baton that is offered and also from the leader willing to share their knowledge in order to help this person and or these people to be able to take up the tasks and run with the momentum. The other was around purpose, that there should be a purpose, a vision either for the business, either for governance, that is to be followed. And there needs to be a momentum that is created to keep, that, to keep trading towards this vision. And when it comes to pivoting, is where now the leader can pivot when they feel that their mentees are ready to take up the leadership role, and they also are not able to continue with the momentum to lead that company, that governor, that, that business that they are leading towards that vision. So there has to be those two things towards it. So push positionality, purpose, and right pivoting. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, um, uh, Kimani. Let's give him a, a round of applause as well. And let's have the final one. Who wants to go last? I, I had the, the voice of a lady. Um, who I was that? I'll present. I'll present okay. for our group. Oh, Christabel, thank you. Yes, uh, so I'll mention what hasn't been mentioned to save on time. Mm -hmm. um, when to know uh, the right time to pass on the button. Uh, so one was when your vision has been attained. And mm -hmm. then uh, when you find out that you know, you're, you're not adding further value into the organization. So that also was a good time for you to, for one to pass on the button. Another one we said was the biological age. So there's, there's that limit that even if you, you haven't attained your vision, but the law gives us a cup <laughs> of, of when you get to a certain age, even if you haven't achieved certain uh, milestones in the organization, then it's time for you to pass on the, the button. Then um, how to prepare for this is figuring out, uh, is having a good succession plan in place. And also another one was partnering with organizations such as the leadership group uh, and offering um, leadership um, you know, trainings for the, for the people you've identified in the organization to be good uh, people to succeed you. So those were the things that we discussed in our group that haven't been mentioned. Thank you very much, Christabel. Uh, let's give uh, the group a round of applause as well. Thank you very much. 
Yeah, so uh, there's quite a number of, 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 of uh, really important points coming up there. And what I'd like to say is to add you to, you know, begin to think about this for yourselves in your own organizations, in your own uh, spaces. Uh, and, 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 and this, of course, applies uh, to families as well. It's not just kind of out in, in, in the open. It's, it's in all situations where we are. I want to, and uh, there's still an opportunity for you just to post some of your uh, comments in the chat box uh, as well. I want to move on to the second part of this, which is connected, uh, but uh, uh, which is connected, which is about legacy. And let me share my screen again so that we uh, we go. Uh, that's the uh, wrong one. Uh, stop share. Uh, share screen. Must be this one. Kelly, just confirm to me that you can see the screen. Yes, we can. Right, thanks. So the second part of this was really around legacy. And what, what brought this to me was over the weekend when I was reading uh, Sunny Bindra's piece. And I've quoted two of the paragraphs in his piece here. I hope you can see it. Um, there comes an age when some of us start to think about our legacy. What will we leave behind? What did we stand for in our lives? Uh, this is because we are consciously or unconsciously aware or, of our impermanence as humans. We know we are here briefly, and then we are gone. Uh, some of us are desperate to acquire a continuity of some sort, to be remembered after we have passed on. It is difficult to accept the idea that our lives might amount to nothing in the end. If you didn't read this article, I would actually recommend that you go back to Sunday Nation and you and, and you see if you can pick it up, February 13th, uh, 2022, by Sunny Bindra. And the next thing that he said was uh, was this about legacy. The only legacy you will have will be in how well you live your life while you live it. Uh, our aim should be to live most of our days, the days of our lives with grace, kindness, and generosity to fulfill the roles of our lives um, as partner, parent, worker, leader, community member, creator, citizen, etc., to the best of our abilities. And according to him, he concludes that that right there is our legacy. And when I saw this, it reminded me of uh, the former Chief Justice Willie Mutunga. I was attending a long time ago, not long time ago, but some years back, he was invited to give a speech and, and at the end of that speech, somebody asked him, uh, CJ, you are just about to retire. Um, what will your legacy be? And CJ Mutunga looked at the crowd and said, actually, I don't think about legacy uh, myself. What I do is I wake up every day, I go to work and I give it my very, very best each and every day uh, I make sure that I give each of the hours that I have my very, very best. And I go home and I, uh, I continue that. And legacy, I will leave legacy to historians to write about. But for me, it's about just doing that thing which I'm about uh, each and every moment of my life. And I found that quite uh, intriguing at the time. Uh, because I expected him just to list out all the many things that he wanted to be remembered for, but he didn't do that. And so when I read this thing about Sunny Bindra, it brought back that same thought from William Mutunga a few years ago uh, back to me. Legacy is, of course, important. Uh, it's important for us to secure it. Um, it's about learning from our past experiences. It's about living in the moment. What is it that we are doing every time uh, that, that we are breathing? Uh, and building for the future. Uh, it's about finding a deeper meaning while, impact, while positively impacting others. So as we think about legacy, these are some of the things that, 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 that pop up. Um, it expands with every new experience. Uh, we act, we inspire other people, uh, and, and through that, 
our legacy can, can then live on. There will be certain kind of physical things that somebody has done that they're remembered for, but actually it's about what we do every moment uh, of our lives. And so uh, again, you know, just thinking about where we started, which was education is really important for us as leaders uh, to give our best. Uh, there comes a time to hand over the button, but as we do that, we're also thinking about what is it that, uh, that, that we are leaving behind? What is it that we are being remembered for? Uh, what is it that's, that's been important? How have we lived our lives? Uh, and I want to take a pause there and again, just uh, uh, invite a few thoughts about uh, uh, leadership legacy. Uh, when you think about leadership legacy in your own space, what comes to mind for you? And therefore, how are you preparing uh, yourself uh, for this. I know that many people on the call are probably um, still very young and ask and wondering what we are, why we are talking about legacy and, uh, and, and, and lifelong leadership here. Um, you know, I never really thought about this when I was in my 20s uh, and probably 30s. And so some of you in that age group may be wondering what we are talking about here. So let me pull down uh, the share and just uh, hear a few comments from yourselves at this point. Who wants to go first and share about legacy? Okay, through the chair. Yes, Fanis. Okay, when, um, when I hear leadership legacy, I think what comes to my mind is um, how many of your employees as a, as a leader have you trans transformed into better workers and even leaders? Right. Yeah. So how many of your employees have you transformed into um, a, a better leader? Uh, you know, uh, funny is when you say that, it brings back to me something which I picked up last week where, um, and I don't remember who has said this, uh, either Maxwell or somebody else, that when you're a leader, remember to send the elevator back down to pick up those you have left behind so that you can also bring them back up to where you are. Okay. Don't stay there alone make sure that you are building other leaders as well. So, so that's, 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 that's certainly a very good point that you raised there. Somebody else about legacy? Yes, Peterson. Thank you so much. We, my take on legacy would be actually working, working, working to create an environment that when you leave, uh, you don't leave a space like we've had people say he has left so a bigger shoe that no one would enter into. Leave <laughs> shoes that everyone behind you will be able to fit in because don't work to be unique until those people could fit into your uniqueness fails the continuation of the work you are doing. So we should be having in mind that in as much as we are trying to be perfect and try to achieve beyond others, we also want to uh, actually be carry on with the people that are below us so that we the people don't start crying that is left such a big shoe that no one would fit in let let's allow people to start fitting in into our shoes when we are still there so that when we leave we will leave a legacy of continuity without breaking the norms without breaking the system without having to reinvent the wheel to continue the good that that we are doing that is me Thank you very much, Peterson. Again, you remind me of, uh, some of you will remember that I was uh, Chief Executive Officer at KCB for a number of years. It was actually, uh, I think about six, seven, uh, seven years or so. And when I was leaving at the end of 20, 2012, which is 10 years ago, uh, uh, people asked Joshua, who was my, going to be my successor, how will you fit into this Martin's big shoes? And, and Joshua was quite philosophical about this. Joshua said, you know, I'm actually not trying to fit into Martin's big shoes. I'm actually creating my own shoes so that I can walk comfortably as I lead this organization. And uh, I believe that he's been able to do that over the last 10 years. Um, but certainly the fact that the institution is, go is, is still going, uh, the graphs are still showing upward trends for me, it gives me a very good feeling that, uh, you know, that that transition and the legacy uh, has worked well. We'll take the final two comments, Jafet and then Gladys, and then we'll, uh, We'll draw the session to a close. Jafet? Jafet, are you on? Well, uh, on uh, yes, Jafet, are you uh, Just uh, my views on legacy. I feel that uh, 
let, let, let people feel that uh, whether I'm there or not, they are able to, to do what is supposed to be done on ground. Because, uh, you know, it's a, a matter of giving them a free hand to explore, you know, to, to, to make decisions. And uh, that is something which they will remember me with because uh, let me not cling on the knowledge I have, but to share whatever I have to make uh, everything uh, to, to a success. That is my point. Thank you very much, Jafet, very much so. Uh, Gladys? Uh, thank you, Daktari. This is very interesting. We are learning a lot. For me, leadership legacy is where me as a leader, I'm able to use my knowledge, my power, my resources, my position, you know, my ability to make a difference in others around me. And when I talk about others, you know, sometimes we only focus on work. I'm looking at it from all aspects, from home, you are a leader. So when, you know, using your power and everything you have, are you making a difference in the people around you at work? Are you making a difference in the people around you? So that when you leave, then things will go on as if you are there. So at least you've left people empowered. You've left people, you know, well placed to move on. So for me, it is actually all of us. So sometimes we go chasing up uh, after the legacy itself, but we just need to do things right and the legacy will remain. So whether it is homework, community, in church, wherever you are, what difference are you making by empowering people and making them stand even when you are not there? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Gladys, for, for those comments. Uh, let me just uh, close off uh, the session by, you know, Kefa picked up this uh, slide yesterday from, uh, from somewhere. Um, you know, and, and the, what we've been discussing is certainly talking to impact uh, you know, how much you've improved things. It's talking to, uh, to breadth, uh, how far your reach has extended. So the people that you've worked with and you've impacted, um, how far into the future, whatever you have built will continue and uh, how much that uh, those who follow you are able to build the things that have been created during your time inside there. So I'd like to really encourage you uh, as we uh, come to the end of the session, to really think about these two issues that we've been discussing today on this webinar, to think about uh, uh, you know, the uh, handing over the baton, but also to think about the legacy and, and how you then you know, spend each and every moment of your lives as you, as, you, as, you, as you move the agenda of leadership forward. I said that we are going to release you by 12 noon and I don't want to break my promises. Um, unfortunately, we don't have uh, time for other comments or questions, but I hope that you will join us for our next uh, webinar where we can then continue the conversations on uh, other leadership topics uh, of the day. I'd like to hand back over to Kefa so that he can then conclude the session for us. Back to you, Kefa. Uh, thank you very much, Martin, uh, for a great uh, facilitation, but thank you as well, all our guests, for being very lively and engaged, and we do hope that. Uh, this session has added value to your leadership journey and that you can pick up and apply a couple of things here as you create your legacy and also plan to let others uh, take over from you when you feel the time for you to step aside is here. We want to thank you and wish you a very, very good day. Uh, we shall be sending you emails as Martin has said around the next uh, webinar. Uh, feel free as well to go to our online properties and be able to register for the next webinar, the dates will be, will be shared in those details. Thank you very much and uh, do enjoy the rest of the week. Thank you, Kefa. Thank you all. Thank you too. Thank you. Thank you.
connects it um, 